next to me, we're printing a, a children's toy. We're printing a top. Printing, that is, on something like your office inkjet, but instead of ink... The printer will lay out a single layer of material, and it will print another layer right on top of it. And layer upon layer, in a matter of hours, objects take shape, encased in a custom-designed protective shell. We're going to show you the process of, of how to remove that support material and how to, to show you that it, it will truly work. And I can start just with my fingers and it's as easy as pulling support material off. 3D printing costs are plummeting. You can get a small one like this for less than two grand. And that's transforming work that traditionally took many hands into the work of just two. It's fairly routine, almost as if you could train a kid to do it. Great way to blow off steam. And that's about the only kind of emission blown off during this revolutionary type of manufacturing, which got me thinking, could these 3D printers be the secret weapon in combating dangerous climate change? I think there's a lot of potential for 3D printing. Caitlin Werrell from the Center for Climate and Security says 3D printing saves time and energy. Printing exactly what you need where you need it. Using 50% less energy and 90% less material than traditional manufacturing, according to the Department of Energy. You inherently reduce uh, your greenhouse gas emissions through this process. That's no small thing in a sector that emits more than 1.2 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases a year. Last year we created our first manufacturing innovation institute in Youngstown, Ohio. The promise of 3D printing is even getting shout outs in high places. A once shuttered warehouse is now a state-of-the-art lab where new workers are mastering the 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. There's no reason this can't happen in other towns. Or in Afghan theaters of war. The Army's Rapid Equipping Force, or REF, has developed the Expeditionary Lab. Also known as a 3D printer in a shipping container, this $2.8 million mobile lab is dropped on location by the Army's Rapid Equipping Force, along with technicians linked to a wireless network of experts who can rapidly prototype things like battery charges. Traditionally, it would take months to create a, a solution. It now happens in days and sometimes hours. And that, theoretically at least, could be a big advantage in a warming world prone to bigger, badder disasters. A lot of times if you look at a conflict situation, the solutions, the technologies that come out of conflict situations can also be applicable to disaster. <laughs> After the tsunami hit Japan in 2011, car manufacturing worldwide fell off a cliff while factories waited for specific Japanese parts. What if 3D printing were scaled up to help? You could essentially download that specific part, maintain your production line. While some experts say the industry could be worth $5 billion by 2020 and produce everything from dental implants to houses, for now, here's our finished piece. Objects like this are still the most commonly printed. But for Simon, sometimes I have to squirt the screen because I can't see. The future couldn't be clearer. Sometimes I have to stop myself and say, hey, something that was just in my brain is now in my hand. That we do have a long way to go between where it exists now, the technology currently exists, and where it could be. The sky's the limit. All right, let's call it a day. <laughs>